bless you, Lord, today. Give you praise and honor in all that you do. Worthy are you to be praised. We announce your king, your kingship, your lordship. That you are the great king over all the earth, over all the nations, no matter what is going on. <laughs> you are Lord of all. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We just begin to lift up our hearts and our hands, our voice, begin to give you praise declare your wonderful works. <laughs> we just thank you, God. the psalmist wrote in Psalm 145 and we just look at your word and begin to sing it and begin to do it not just read it but to actually do it we bless your holy name today tonight morning evening noon wherever you may be we just bless you because at all times the earth is the footstool heavens it really is oh lord continue to wake us up to the reality continue this great awakening up to our kingdom reality not an earth-based reality anymore but to a king a kingdom that is not of this world but in this world that we begin to realize and come to the revelation and, re <laughs> and growth and faith that we are really in a kingdom your kingdom like jesus told Pontius Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. And we are in him. <laughs> in you, Jesus. We just thank you. We just give you praise and honor. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. In Psalm 145, Lord, I just just going to begin to just read and sing the psalm, starting in verse 3. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And your greatness is unsearchable. And one generation shall pray to another and shall declare your mighty acts Of your righteousness. 
saints, we shall bless you. We shall make known. And we shall speak.
bless you, Lord. We'll come back and bless the Lord a little bit more later on. Right now, just going <laughs> to share a couple things and then... Um, <laughs> First, I'm going to get a gla- drink of water. It's good to see you all here. <clears throat> We've been real busy. I have to tell you, I'm doing conferences several nations around the world each week just a little while ago we finished with those from uh, Germany and, and Holland and oftentimes we're joined by those from Wales and Turkey on those calls and it's really an amazing thing and the explosion the seeds that are being planted right now seeds of the kingdom I mean real just out of the box we should say seeing the word explode from a kingdom perspective of a kingdom that's not of this world and seeing the meaning of these things of, of what a king is what the kingdom is and it's just amazing and and no words are going to reveal this that's no words it's going to be revealed by seeking and hungering after this by literally being poor in spirit, which really means that word poor in spirit in Matthew 5, 5 means that one that's desperate, like almost begging, desperate, has to have more. You have to have it because it's, it's not enough. And when we are poor in spirit with that to seek this, these things, Jesus says theirs is the kingdom of God. There's so many mysteries that we will not figure out in our intelligence. And we are in the days that we have to let faith rise up, walking by faith in the Son of God, because His ways are not our ways. They really aren't. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And just to think that this one, Jesus, said to us in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, Fear not, little flock, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom doesn't fit into our situations. It's too much. We overcome the situations by fitting into the kingdom because that's what he's done for us. That is where he has set us up. That is where we are in him. He literally set us up to sit with him in those heavenly places. So before we get going into talking about the aspect of not only our identity but what we carry, these exciting things that are going on They're going on weekly in the nations. It's like the Lord was showing me today. He gave me a flash vision and like the whole download. And like seeds being planted deep in in different nations that are taking good root about the kingdom and beginning to expand upon it. My brothers in India are... Things just this past week are just exploding in them. They're beginning... It's like... Take, tell me what you're seeing. It, it's not just me. We're, it's like a journey together because we're one body. <laughs> Those in Africa, amazing things taking place. Oh, I could go on and on. In Mexico, it's just Taiwan. Oh, my goodness. All over. And uh, so I, I want to share something that a month from today, on April 17th, we are going to have the fourth roar where the nations come together and we begin to bless the Lord. And and and, and we just lift up a, a sound where it says in that Psalms 89 verse 6 where the nations come together and bless Him. Yes, but there's something specific beginning to happen because I really believe we are entering into this awakening, the awakening of the kingdom. And when He be lifted up and we be empowered, it will draw men. It will draw men. It, you will it, you will be the light on the hill that it, just like Isaiah said that that those there would be those that come and say you know the way up this mountain take me with you he'll draw the men it is really that type of an awakening bringing not just souls into the kingdom but re, them being revealed to of their royal status this tremendous gift and when that grows What authority? It's the highest authority in all of creation. All of it. Amazing. 
So in April, in, in next next month, a month from today, April 17th, I just, just mark this down because it's not just an event, a Christian event. This These are solemn gatherings where brothers from the Middle East to, to China and Taiwan to that whole Pacific Rim to Australia to Mexico to Brazil Europe it is really amazing <laughs> we the only one the only continent we haven't had an actual visitor on these is from Antarctica but they've heard that too and I'm saying to you that these things these things mark them down because this is where our royal identity is released is is activated but it's also our royal position and authority when we release that sound and we hear word we really hear things that it's being released in the earth and God inhabits the praises of his people and we know with the high praises of God in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand he brings corrections on the people binds kings and chains and nobles and fetters of iron and carries out the judgments written this honor has the saints that's Psalm 149. And on that day, we're going to have a, I know that there is going to have a special friend here that speaks and prophesies to, nation, to leaders of nations. And um, I've known him for 30, no, 25 years. And he'll, he'll be here. He, he's, my, he's like a mentor to me in this sound one that's encouraged me and I've been with him all over the world <laughs> and have watched this prophetic word come to governmental leaders in places that if I told the story I'm not even sure I'd believe it even though I was there <laughs> but still the things that are happening in these days in the world I'm telling you is nothing compared to what's happening in the heavens and what's exploding. So mark these, this date down. You see it over here. I, I can't really do that, but I can. April 17th. There's the Zoom ID. There's, the information is also on our on the webpage, project7thtrumpet.com. I'm encouraging you because as we've just entered into this worship, when the whole earth begins to join in on this, this is, this is where our royal authority is not just exercised, it accomplishes things because our weapons they're not carnal they're not logical they're mighty through god in the pulling down strongholds so mark that down it's three times on that day in our hemisphere will be 8 a.m the eastern part of the united states 8 a.m 2 p.m and 8 p.m and it, for the specific times just go to the web page and uh or he or contact us either way but it is just mark it down that's all i want this that's all i want to say i'm not one to do too much promotions as you notice in the past and the, uh it's because well it's just because I, I just love to worship and speak about him and this is because he's calling for this the other thing that's been going on is is as we disciple these nations, we've also been carrying out these tremendous mission works with partnering with those, and many of them I have met in the travels and have forged covenant relationships with. And so we've always done grassroots from here, direct right into that place, right into those places that you see those pictures. No middleman, no agency. This is it. And we have seen tremendous things happening. And in the last week and a half, we have seen the farming, a farming situation in Kenya rise up that will, they've had so many problems with droughts, also in, in Malawi, droughts and then floods, that it wrecked crops and it's caused hunger. And we, even though there are other initiatives we've been involved in with the chicken farmings and so forth, that is really an amazing thing. And I, the support of this, is, it's just amazing what goes on. This... I'm, I'm a lo lost for words because we literally just planted seed, literally, and they have turned it into tremendous productivity and longevity. But in the recent, in the recent weeks and recent months, there's been a severe hunger thing going on there. 
And so we have begun to bridge the gap for that while providing seed and fertilizer for land that is owned in Kenya and uh, providing not only for them, about 200 orphans there, but also in Malawi where there's over 500 orphans and, and a couple of communities, they do have a harvest that's coming in at the end of April, beginning of May. But between now and then, it is a difficult place for them. It's rather difficult for them. So we were able to pr begin to, 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 to raise the support and already these, are, these pictures you're looking at, these are just in the last couple of days. These are not stock pictures. These are those that hadn't eaten in a while that are eating because of us, you, us, together. Those children. There's leaders in the kingdom in there. <laughs> and they won't forget what's being done. So we just thank you, Lord. So there is, please go to the... Um, on our homepage at Project 7th Trumpet, there is a link to things. And on this Facebook page, if you scroll down, there is a, it'll talk about the, the initiative and how you can be of support. And believe me, it has really been remarkable. So I just want to encourage you on that. Praise the Lord. We just give you praise. I, I, I'm just excited in all that he's doing. So not only we've sharing the gospel of the kingdom and discipling nations but with all of us and, and us wakening up but we're, <laughs> we're we're that wakening up just in visions and dreams but in revelation knowledge practical things of operating in an actual kingdom in the earth is beginning to awaken in us it's amazing to see these things take place I don't even have words for it so if it sounds like I'm not making sense is a good that's a good possibility but i i'm just full of joy to see the things that are taking place and full of joy that when we join together as one there's nothing we can't do when we say and decree we're going to talk about this that we will wipe out hunger that we will not let the enemy rob kill and destroy those are words not just of hope and trying to raise up authority because of our spirituality no it's because of our position in Christ of being royalty. As we grow in him, we begin to get the tools that are necessary to carry out kingdom functions in the earth because the Lord said, greater things shall you do. It's really amazing. So just sit right down here, project7thtrumpet.com and, and just or contact us or many of you may know. But it's, by the way, if you go to the, the GoFundMe page or the other page, there are videos of them thanking us. It is it's just spectacularly beautiful. So we just thank you, Father. We give you praise and honor for all that you're doing. So I want to just, uh, <laughs> oh, Lord, we just, just for a second, just, we just bless your holy name. are highly <laughs> you are highly praised you are worthy of all glory and honor hallelujah hallelujah so I just want to take a few minutes and, and share something that the Lord has been laying on, on my heart but actually, uh, he's had me he's had me study so much about the kingdom over the years and then putting together a video series that's also available and all that. And I'm going to let you in a secret. I've never done this, but it actually has me writing a book and uh, I've made quite progress in it. Uh, and it's just about empowerment for the kingdom age. Just it's not to be a. I am, don't consider myself a, a guru teacher. Um, I really don't. I consider, oh, excuse me. I consider what we're doing, what I do is just to point the way, prophetically point the way. And we have to go search it out. Each of us have to go search this out. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> each of us have to go search it out. So I just kind of lay out a few things, and then we're the ones that got to search. Proverbs 25, chap uh, chapter 25, verse 2 says this, that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings to search it out. And so we are the ones that are to search these things out. When we hear something and it stirs our spirit, search it out. The scriptures are, they're, they're full that, of answers to mysteries. And so tonight, you know, it's talking about, we've been talking about it a, a bit with, well, quite a bit with others in other nations. But, you know, as we've come to understand, begin to understand what a kingdom is, but also what a king is. And you know, we've talked about a king being sovereign. Uh, he is sovereign. That means, and I know we've talked about this, you may not like it, but a king is not wrong, ever. He may be morally incorrect and morally deficient and not right in the eyes of God, but in his kingdom, he's the sovereign. And so we've learned th things like that. And thank goodness that we have a good king, a very good king, an excellent king who has no wrong in him whatsoever, no fault in him. And I just uh, say, Lord, blessings. Wow. But what's an amazing thing about a king is that, and, and keep in mind, remember this, he made us kings and priests unto our God. He made us a royal priesthood. That's first, first Peter chapter 2, verse 9, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 and chapter 5 verse 10 he made us kings and priests so what does this mean what is, if if we're in royalty what is it that we what is it that we have and there's many things but one of the things that we have to keep in regard is that there's dominion involved which means rule and authority and in that dominion in this dominion that a king, one that is the king, that his words in a kingdom, his words and his decrees are laws. And that's a principle. You, you can't change that. That's exactly what a kingdom is. So when the king speaks, there it, it becomes law. And so when, um, when he issues a decree, it has so much dominion so much that he himself as a man or a head of state or a person he himself the person who has the crown is subject to that word and there's a law i talk about a little bit that uh that, that Dar it's made mention in, with the king darius called the law of Me medes and persians where once a king makes a decree a law spoken out of his mouth he cannot retract it it is law and he himself is subject to it that's how powerful it is so keep in mind that though there's authority there's also the need of wisdom and self-control and watching what is being said absolutely when daniel and i'll just refer to the scripture in daniel chapter six we talk about the day you know the daniel being thrown into the lion's den and where, how miraculously god saved him it, it, it was miraculous but see look at the story before that see darius loved king darius he was not an israel he was not a jew he was not jewish at all he loved daniel and Daniel had a prominent position in the kingdom, which made a few of the other guys quite jealous. And so, <laughs> so these guys, when they, you know, the other princes and governors and all that, they tried to find things wrong with Daniel so that they could bring it to the king or convict him or, or arrest him or whatever. But they couldn't find nothing on, on the guy. They couldn't find any, anything. He was just, he was loyal, good, and true. And, uh, and he worshiped the Lord. So what happened is, is these guys get together, these kings and these counselors, these, you know, not kings, but, you know, the governors and the counselors and leaders and princes and all that, and they devise a plan. And they come to the king. And they come to the king and they, they say to King Darius, hey, you are such a good king, we want to show you great tribute. So we wrote up this decree that if you agree and sign, we'll be irrevocable even by the king's word irrevocable for 30 days and that decree is nobody could pray or worship or or ask anything of another god except to ask of darius as a tribute to king darius 
Well, Darius was taken back by the flattery and tribute. He wasn't thinking, and he signs the thing and decrees it. Well, the game, the game was on, and those guys went. The first thing they did is they found Daniel. <laughs> it sounds like today's politics. I, I had to throw that in there. That's why I stuttered. I went, wow. And then Daniel, Daniel was found praying. And that was against the law now. So they bring da Daniel to before Darius, and Darius is absolutely beside himself. He was so like, you guys tricked me. You guys tricked me. And now the sentence for D Daniel is to be thrown into the lion's den, and, and, and Darius was up. He, he was trying to figure out how, how to avoid this, but he could not retract the word as king. The only one that can retract a king's word is a higher king. A higher king. So when Daniel had to go to the lion's den, Darius was, couldn't sleep all night, but when he, he said something remarkable to Daniel on the way into the den, he says, may your God deliver you. And this is a king, a, a heathen king, crying out to a higher king, a higher authority, to deliver Daniel in spite of the king giving a word. Now, we may say, well, that's irrelevant, but in, in a kingdom mindset, that is absolutely huge. That's reversing a law that Congress and the President of the United States would say, sign and pass, and someone came along and just went, no, it's not. That's what judges are supposed to, if, if it's not right. But think about something that is even higher than that, that just came and said, no, just says no to that to a, to a law or reverses a king's word and so that is exactly what happened and of course daniel was saved and then the other part of this uh, i'll come come back to uh, more you know more about a king getting caught in his words the other part of this is that when a king or one in authority and you military guys you know this when a commanding officer even just speaks nonchalantly like gee i wish i had a you know I wish I had a, a Diet Coke, you know, or something, and they're in the middle, you're in the middle of no place. Well, that, those, those guys right underneath them, they'll do anything. They'll do everything, including break down, you know, walls and everything to get a Diet Coke for him. It's not to try to buddy up to the guy. It's that a wish of a commander, a wish of a king is actually a command. It's not that they intend to make a command. They may be just being talking. This is why we have to watch what we say. But it becomes a command in the, in, in, in many, in the military. It'll become, it, it's like a command. In the kingdom of God, it, it, in the kingdom, it, it becomes our desire to fulfill that wish. It, it, it's, but it is, a, it is the same. A wish of a, of a king is the same as a command. It has the same regard and respect. So David had that happen in 2 Samuel chapter 23, where he's with his three big commanders, you know, the commandos, you know, just thinking about, you know, having Arnold Schwarzenegger and, you know, Sylvester Stallone and Dolph Lundgren next to him, you know. And David says, gee, if only I could, someone could get me a cup of water out of that well in Bethlehem. Well, that well is behind, well behind enemy lines. He's just talking. You know, he's tired like the rest of the guys. Well, those three guys, they tear, they tear right through the whole line of the Philistines and get that cup of water and bring it back. And David was like, <gasps> and he pours it out because he could not receive that. He says, I can't t receive something that costs me nothing. And that, you could just go down the line of how much we receive from the kingdom of God, but we, we, Look, many of us are stingy. Let's face it. We'll receive and receive and receive, but we're stingy. Th there's no covenant there. Uh, that's a whole thing. That's another thing. There's no covenant if we keep receiving, but there's no, there's, this ha exchange is paramount. Well, David had nothing to exchange with that. So he said, I can't receive something that costs me nothing. And so, you know, that's a whole other subject, but it, it is true. I, you know, I don't mean to call anybody that, but, you know, in general, that, 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 that's, that's a case. That, the, the, we, we, we think we come to, I, I've been guilty of this. I would go to gather, to get blessed by the Lord. And, and I look through scripture and it, you don't come to the throne room to get blessed. You come to the throne room to pay tribute. 
and then he he <laughs> he's a good king he will reciprocate but that's it begins to reverse in our mindsets yeah it's not us centered it's him centered but he in his eye in his eye we're the apple of his eye that means he, we're the center so now it, it, when we come back to talking about the words of a king you know uh you know just during the time of building the temple cyrus had ordered yeah, uh, you can find this in in like I believe in you know in Ezra you can find the the story of Darius uh, in regards to Cyrus. But see, Cyrus had uh, had ordered for the had for the temple to be rebuilt, and basically what happened. I'll make this real short. Is that when 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 they went to build the temple, they they were f- they were met. The Israelites, they were met by uh, those that basically frustrated the whole situation. I'm cutting out a lot of things. And all they got done during Cyrus's rule was building the foundation because they, there were those that were trying to, to stop it and, um, and trying to get King Cyrus to, 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 not, to not allow it to be built. But he had already decreed it and decreed the provisions for it. And then the successor uh, behind Cyrus... He bought into this, oh, if they build that thing, I won't get taxes beyond a certain place or, you know, or tributes. And, and so it didn't get built until the time of Darius. Now, he, here's what I'm trying to get to. And you can read this in Ezra chapter 6, you know, and, and read that. And bef- chapter 5 has some things, too. And in that, what Darius did is uh, the, he was approached again about building the temple. And, and he was told there was a decree made by King Cyrus. But before, <laughs> of course, with that comes the, the false news guys that say, oh, yeah, but if you do that, all these things are going to happen and everything else and trying to stop it. But Darius was said, basically, hey, th- if King Cyrus made a decree, I don't have the authority to reverse that. And so they did a search and lo and behold, they found the decree. They found the decree and it was read. And Darius not only read the decree and ratified it, he added to it. And you can read that in, in you can read that in uh, in the book of Ezra. So there is again that a king honoring a king's word, that he's not reversing that. He will honor that. And then uh, Nebuchadnezzar. This one's a great one, and you can find this story in Second Samuel, chapter twelve, verse seven through four. No, nope, excuse me. Uh, we'll just go on to, I'm going to bypass the one with David. That's a great one. Well, maybe I'll talk about that. I, I love these things. But King Nebuchadnezzar, in Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 23, that it's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Say that a bunch of times. And so, <laughs> you know, where they're thrown into, you know, to the fire because, you know, Nebuchadnezzar makes his big golden statue of himself and they're all going to worship him right <laughs> they're all gonna, they're all going to you know where everybody's going to worship and bow down because you know nebuchadnezzar he, he was kind of full of himself right you'd say that yeah I, <laughs> no doubt and so he he they, he builds this the statue and and the order is everyone's to worship it well you know those three guys they don't bow down to it and so, you know, Nebuchadnezzar is kind of humiliated and really angry. So he tells, he tells his, you know, his guards and his servants to turn the fire up seven times. And, then, and they immediately, once it was seven times, threw those three guys in there, of course. And it was so hot, the guys that had the job of throwing them in, they got burnt. They, got, they were burnt alive. They were just burnt up, you know. And so while they're in the fire... Uh, Nebuchadnezzar looks at the fire and sees the f- a fourth one that's like it's like the son of God and so he's amazed and when they bring the three out that they didn't even have the smell of smoke on them and Nebuchadnezzar realized <laughs> that these guys their God is God and so when they when in verse 28 of chapter three of Daniel Nebuchadnezzar does acknowledge the Lord and he says that uh, he the Lord sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him these servants trusted in the Lord and Nebuchadnezzar recognized it and the next statement is as kingly is as humble a thing a king can say because he has to acknowledge there's a higher power 
he says this after he says and has delivered his servants that trusted in him he said and has changed the king's word he's admitting that this god is so powerful it changed his word and that's something nebuchadnezzar himself could not change his own word and here it is he's acknowledging it and then of course those guys were <laughs> they were made princes and crowned and honored and uh nebuchadnezzar definitely had a change of heart there's no doubt there's no doubt about it you know one other thing i'll talk about this with the king is the story of uh Nathan with Bathsheba and, and, and how prophet Nathan, uh, not David and Bathsheba and how the prophet Nathan dealt with David about that sin. And, uh, and you, you find that story in like second Samuel, like chapter 12. And in that, and I, I love just kind of sharing the stories, you teachers out there, you, you're going to be able to teach this stuff in detail. And of course, when you, you write, you can get real detailed. But basically, Nathan knows that David did wrong with Bathsheba. You know, Bathsheba, he, you know David, <laughs> he said that he saw Bathsheba and he wanted her. But she was married and married to a, to a really a, a, good, a good soldier, a, a loyal servant of the Lord, a, a, you know, a commander. And, ha and David all of a sudden had that guy sent to the front lines. It's a certain death. And, of course, he dies, so he takes him as his wife. Nathan sees the wrong in that. So Nathan knows this. You cannot come to a king and tell a king, king, you did wrong. You lose your head. It's not that you're insulting him. He said you cannot bring wrong about a sovereign while he's royal. You know, I know it sounds funny, but it's true. The reason the Lord can is because he's a higher king. So Nathan, knowing this, he does something remarkable. He begins to tell a story about a man that has a lamb, and some man comes along and steals that lamb. And it was really precious to that, to that man. And, and, and it moved David's heart so much that David is listening to the story about this man, you know, knowing it's in the kingdom. And David stands up. Now, Nathan's talking to him as a king, you know, talking to David the king. So David the king stands up and says, surely this man will restore and he will die for this. This is atrocity. This is horrible. And Nathan turns to him and says, really? <laughs> well, king, David, you're the man. The wisdom in this is he didn't accuse the king. He told the king about a story in the kingdom and the king out of his mouth pronounced sentence over a man. So Nathan happened to identify the man. The protocol of the kingdom, these guys knew this stuff, is that now David was so, he realized his error, his wrong. He realized the death sentences, the death sentence was upon him. You say, but it's by his own mouth. He could reverse it. No, he can't because he pronounced it as king and he can't do that. It, you, it's, impo it's an impossibility. And so, of course, Nathan, the Lord speaks to Nathan, and Nathan delivers a word back to, to David and says, David, you're not going to die. A higher king interrupted that king's decree. It is going to cost you, and the son's going to die. And, it, and that's what happened. But David learned. He's <laughs> David also was subject to the words of his own mouth, and he was the man. And it's, it's a brilliant story. See, when we begin to put on these kingdom eyes, and learn, we have to first have a foundation of what a kingdom is. Trust me, it is not our spiritual training we've had all these years. That When we take all that we are that he's made us and rest it in an actual kingdom thinking mentality mindset, the scripture will explode a hundred times, maybe even more. We begin to see things we would never have considered because our cultural backing, which influenced a lot of our training, was, um, didn't lend ourselves to see these finer points of being in a kingdom. And when we come into the king of glory, we talked about this, into the presence of a king, there's protocols that are being laid out. You know? And the advantage these guys had is they were raised in a kingdom. We, I, ha, I wasn't. So to look at this and begin to change and say we are in an actual kingdom and that we can see, hey, look, David abided by this even when he pronounced as king a sentence over a man who he happened to be the man. 
these things, and trust me, when we seek this kingdom, it is really remarkable. Now, I can sense that we can say, wow, well, that doesn't, you know, I never heard anything like this before. Well, of course, because things are hidden, and it's the glory of God to hide it, and the, the, the honor of kings to search it out. In these days, this empowerment, that nothing can come against this, even no matter what any man does the man's devices cannot destroy this at all this is what he's brought us into in him not only did he save us he's actually brought us into him who has all listen all power and all authority in heaven and earth that's who we're in so when we look at this king that the king of glory the father the almighty his dominion was so great uh, we have to think outside the box here that you know, the f first chapter of Genesis, this king of everything, creation, God Almighty, when he would speak, things would, the elements obeyed. Let there be light. Huh. The earth was without form and void. And he said, let there be, you know, he said, let there be water, let there be land, let there be, you know, let there be man. It, it, and in that creation, the elements began, would obey him. And I, you know, you understand, I'm talking as a lay person right now because I, I just amazed. It's not so much to me amazed that his word would be that powerful that when spoken, the dominion in his realm and the authority is so great that the elements actually obey. This is beyond our thinking because his ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. So in the beginning, this is a beautiful passage in the beginning of uh, the Gospel of John. This is going to be real interesting to you. I want to read this. It's really interesting. Talking about the word. And remember the word. I'm talking about a king's word. And it says this in, in John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. In the beginning was the word. <laughs> and the word was with God. And the word was was God well let, let's wrap our heads around that the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehends it not and amazing is when we talk about this in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amazing. You know, <coughs> in our studies, many of us learned that there's, you know, a couple words for the word word in Greek. One of them is rhema, you know, that enlightenment. You know, when a word comes and all of a sudden we understand it, poof, you know, the light bulb goes off. That's rhema. But, you know, the written word, the spoken word, that's logos. So my first thinking is, well, that word, you know, I, you know, go to the concordance. I, I, I literally had assumed, I guess that word's rhema, but it's not. It's the actual word logos. And I said, man, logos, the logos. So in the beginning was the logos and the logos was with God and the logos was God. Well, I, I didn't quite grab hold of it until I looked at what that word logos means which we translate to word and logos <laughs> is is an utterance but it's also a decree it's a mandate it's an actual order so when the mandate the utterance the decree of god almighty the decree was god that word was so powerful so powerful that I don't believe that the language could even express how powerful that word is. The word was God. How much more powerful can you get? In other words, the utterance, the decree, the absolute sovereignty of all things was written in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And when I started getting hold of this, you know, I, I sometimes get pretty slow. When I got down to verse 14 of that same gospel, it says this, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I couldn't get past the fact that, and the Word, the Logos, again, the Logos was made flesh. Think about this. 
The agreement was made and he sent his only son. He sent his only son. And the word, when he spoke these things, became flesh. His word, I cannot explain this. This is where we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It is so powerful what he speaks. And to think that he wants to give us the kingdom as an inheritance. And to think that he made us kings and priests unto our God. And this great king, that when he spoke that word, his begotten was made flesh. We're talking about authority beyond any nuclear man's devices, beyond any situation we could ever possibly have. We are in that place. This is really something deep that we have to search out. And if it doesn't sound normal, I'm just reading from the Scripture and discovering these things. But that actual word was made flesh. And then when Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist, when he was raised out of that water, the heavens opened, they heard a voice from heaven. The same voice that spoke the word and was made flesh speaks and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And if you remember, we talked about kings. When they come to power after they're trained and the king approves, their father approves, it's to say that is decreed over them. Well, that decree coming from heaven, that when he decreed that over him, over Jesus from the heavens, this is my son who I'm well pleased. The, the one that he decreed it over was his actual word made flesh and he decrees approval and decrees kingship, heirship, everything. <laughs> let, boof, let it happen. Why, do I, why am I excited about this? Because... In, when he ascended, he said, All power and authority in heaven and earth has been given unto him. And we are in him. As we begin to rise up in this type of authority, in this, is there anything impossible? No, because we're in him. Is there anything impossible? No, because our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. All this begins to fall into place if we see ourselves in a kingdom that is centered in in the heavenly realm yet on the earth, a kingdom that is not of this world. This is the gospel of the kingdom. <laughs> this would, I, and I'm repeating the words, even what Jesus spoke, even what, the, what was recorded about him. And the word was made flesh. And this is my son who I'm well pleased. <laughs> it goes on to say, listen to him. So imagine this. That you, <laughs> that you have been brought into him, made joint heirs with him. That's Romans 8, verse 17. Joint heirs. He didn't just save us. He brought us in to the household. His blood that, that were, that's covered us, that covenant that was made between, in his blood that was shed, the covenant between God and man. Allows us to come into the Holy of Holies. I mean, such royalty. These are places that King David, Solomon, Moses, uh, the high priest Aaron, none of them had access. David, none of them had access to this stuff, to that place. We do because we're in him. (laughs) It's so amazing. And so, so amazing is this king, Jesus. He's the highest king. He's the preeminent, the head of the body. That's first Coloss- chapter 1 of Colossians, verse 18. He's the head the, who has preeminence, the head of the body, the ecclesia, or the church. He's the head. It is so amazing, the authority that he has, that in him, being the Son of Man, the Son of God, the co- <laughs> we'll go talk about that sooner or later, being amazing, having all power in heaven and earth. He himself actually, (laughs) he changed the law of sin and death. That's how high a king he is. It was decreed that if these laws are broken and we're not covered by, that there was death, that we would die. But he, being the highest of kings now, could, he changed the law of sin and death. And we now have the law of life and liberty in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed us 
from that law of sin and death. That's a kingdom governmental action that he took powered by the love of the Father. It is so amazing, these things. It is so amazing, these things. that are, I just want to say this to you, that as we have been brought into his royalty, when we really have, we've been brought into his royalty. Oh, Lord Jesus. We have been made a royal priesthood, chosen generation, a holy nation, set apart to show forth the praises of him who's called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. And that's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It's so amazing. And, and he made it to rise up and to sit with him, raise us up together and sit with him in heavenly places, crucified with him and raised with him in his likeness in him, which means in him. And that's in Romans chapter 6. And we have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, in the company of innumerable angels. Mount Zion is the seat of government. And we have access into the Holy of Holies by the blood of the Lamb. And that's in Rome, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, of coming to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. It is so magnificent. And to think that He wants to give us the kingdom. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. That's so amazing. So, Lord, I ask this, that you waken us up to realize that we're in a royal position in you, that our words do carry that same type. It carries that authority. And if we come into agreement and agreeing, touching any one thing with another, that our Father in heaven will do it. But if that is not according to, <laughs> trust me, if it doesn't line up with the laws of the kingdom and the laws of life and liberty, there is a higher king that can overrule that. So we are careful of what we say. Life and death are right here in your tongue. Blessing and cursing right there in your tongue. What you speak, it's not an enchanting, it's not a hope, it's not a wish. It carries royal authority. That is why it, there's so much spoken about bridling the tongue. I still have a lot to learn about that. I do. But one thing is for sure. I'm ha one thing's for sure. His word is for sure. All that I just read, that's his word. He cannot revoke it. He doesn't want to revoke it. But whether we come to believe and trust in the knowledge of the Son of God growing in these things, that our insight and understanding continues to grow of a kingdom that is not of this world but in it. We rule and reign with him. That is not a church board member. That's the actual over everything. And they say, is he mad at the church? No, I'm not mad at the organized church. I'm not mad at all at it. No, no. I'm just, just proclaiming the great and mighty acts of what he's doing in these days. Releasing the information. He's releasing the knowledge. And there are those that are really seeking his kingdom on his terms. And Lord... We want to seek your kingdom on your terms. <laughs> seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which means his ways, his terms, basically. And all these things will be added unto you. We have truly entered into a kingdom age. We have truly entered into a kingdom age. So I say to you, <laughs> be blessed knowing that you are royalty and the words you speak have power. And a good king does not use that for his advantage. A good king will always use this to glorify his father just like Jesus did. Thank you, Father. A good king will seek out counsel about decisions a good king does not have the attitude of being right all the time. A good king has the attitude, a humble attitude 
of understanding concepts like not having contempt prior to investigation. That's a thing I've learned. Contempt prior to investigation. Making judgments based on impulse and what you think is right and think is God without checking it, without coming to agreement. There are things about kingly responsibilities we have to learn. One of them is not having contempt prior to investigation. Another one that I heard just last night is not challenge our preconceptions about things before they challenge you. Challenge our preconceptions about things before they challenge you. I heard that and I said, that's a kingly quality. Before a king makes a decision, he'll seek out wise and wisdom and counselors. He'll seek out things. He won't just make a, a blatant, quick, unilaterally decision or quick uh, judgment or discernment. He'll check it with others. Those that have like-mindedness. And if agreement takes place, even the Word talks about the witnesses and things, then yes, then action should be. And a king, a good king, does not act on impulse or emotion. I'm learning that too. He acts on the wisdom of I want to say like Solomon on the wisdom of his father and then his wisdom went great. How about Jesus on, he does, Jesus, the king of everything, says this, I only speak what I hear my father saying and do what I see my father doing. <laughs> it's all right there when we have these kingdom eyes on. And the life and liberty and the freedom and all these things are added unto us. All these things. Oh, Yes. So just for a moment, just bless the Lord and give Him praise and thank Him for all that He's done. And knowing that Your words, they're kingly words. Hallelujah, Father. We just thank You, Father. We just thank You, Lord.